Welcome back to Finley Stadium. We are here again with another match of Chattanooga FC women's soccer. Today, the Chattanooga FC women will be facing off against the Memphis Lobos. And we've got a lot of soccer action here today. And the newly crowned champions of the Southeastern Conference here of the WPSL are looking to play their first game as the champs. And Alex and I were able to talk to uh, Desiree Robinson, one of the assistant coaches before the game, about coming into the game with that mindset of playing as a champion. I'm Keon Rose. Alongside me is Alex Poulon, and we have quite a show for you today. Yeah, um, we, as Keon mentioned, we got to talk to a couple of the, or a player and Desiree Robinson, the coach, and from talking to them, they all seem pretty excited for this match. They want to play as a championship team should. They want to come out here, play well, and win, of course. And there's a bit more than just the championship being dealt with that they have to worry about today. They want to win this game for pride reasons because last time these two teams faced off, Memphis won 4-0. So the Chattanooga women's team will definitely be looking for a win here today. That is their only loss of the season, that loss to the Memphis Lobos in Memphis. And I'm sure that it didn't sit well with this team as competitive as they are. And I mean, they came out this season and played about as good a soccer as anybody could have asked to been played. Before we jump any further, I'm going to give you the starting lineups of both squads, starting with the Memphis Lobos. Number 10, Caitlin Barnes. Number 20, Anna De La Rosa. Number 21, Caitlin Scholes. Number 27, Kaylee Hammer. Number 2, Sarah Herring. Number 5, Jillian Hildreth. Number 23, Kelsey Keown. Number 8, Jen Lee, number six, Kat Levasseur, number seven, Marie Levasseur, and number three, Abigail Lawler. For your Chattanooga FC women, the squad is number 27, Brittany Reed, number two, Josie Morche, number 17, Lizzie Shaughnessy, number four, Anna Lanter, number three, Jessica Shepard, number seven, Ruth Rosales, number 15, Cass Wade, number 14, Summer Lanter, number 19, Mia Hollingsworth, Number 10, Ashley K, and of course, as usual, Cosette Morche, number zero in goal. 
and I was reading a couple of the tweets by the club and other people mentioning them, and according to the Chattahooligans, the lovely supporter section of the Chattanooga Football Club, they say that Morche is French for champion, which, by the way she's played, I don't think she, they're very wrong in saying that. No, and, and we have two Morches, and we have a team full of champions as the Lobos are trying to assert themselves in this game. They were able to shut out CFC the last time that they played, and Chattanooga FC looking to flip the script on that today. Chattanooga FC in the white jerseys and blue shorts, and the Memphis Lobos in the navy blue jerseys and navy blue shorts. So, no confusing these two teams today. And you mentioned the last meetup between these two teams. From what I've heard, Chattanooga did not have seven of their normal starters for that match. So, that may play a big factor into how this game uh, ends, with the team being at full strength as opposed to missing seven of the regular starting players. Right, which makes a gigantic impact. Another thing that's going to make a gigantic impact today is there are unlimited substitutions in WPSL soccer, and the roster for CFC much bigger than the roster for Memphis Lobos. So that's going to play a factor, I imagine, with the heat that we've experienced today. Yeah, the air temperature is one thing, but the field, it being an artificial field, is so much hotter than the, just the air temperature because the black rubber pellets in the field that make it have the natural bounce that it should have as you would playing on dirt they hold the heat in a lot and we were down on the field earlier and it is very very warm yeah i know it felt it felt like a desert down there and we were only down there for a few moments and i was ready to leave <laughs> So I can't imagine what it's like with the ladies playing down there today, but the the substitutions are going to play a big factor in all of that as we're going to have a throw in here for Memphis Lobos. Chattanooga FC dominating the ball so far, hoping to set that tone that they're looking for going to be another Memphis Lobos throw. I would say Chattanooga today are going to play with a bit more style and a bit more freedom than they would if this was a match that actually cost something in the championship. With the championship, as we said earlier, they want to win. They want to play like a championship winning team, but I say they're going to add their own little flair to that as well, having that ability to play almost relaxed and the fact that the result doesn't matter as much. So I'll say you see a lot of players having fun, a lot of cool, interesting skills that you normally wouldn't see in a competitive match. They're going to run this one down, and the header is going to go over the top of the goal. Header attempt, I believe, by Summer Lantern. play that one back towards Gazette Mache. Brittany Reed involved in a pre-game proposal. That's a nice gesture. The way that they did that I thought was very clever. Yeah, I was I was kind of confused myself, honestly, and I even knew about it happening. But the the way they worked around it and the execution of it I think was very, very good. So probably the ooh, it's a very, very good shot goes just over the crossbar. Props to the CFC women's team organizing, or in part organizing that. There's only about four or five people that actually knew about it though. So, yeah, it was nice to see before a game. It was, and 
so you're Brittany Reed, your fiance and a champion. So that that's got to feel pretty good. And Mia Hollingsworth just now, with some execution of her own, with that shot on goal that was dangerous. Let's say. Yeah, looked like the goalkeeper was slightly worried about that, but it was just over the bar. And I say they're going to see a lot of shots out of Chattanooga tonight. They don't have to be conservative with their shooting. So they might all be the best shots, but I'd say you see a lot of them. And sometimes volume wins the day in this sport. Right, right. Running that one down to Shaughnessy. She's going to play that one back to Roche. All is dispossessed near midfield. And Lobos with one of their better chances so far. The pass just too far ahead. This will be a goal kick. Chattanooga. I say the Lobos are going to look to win this as well. Because even though they can't win their conference, no one wouldn't say no to the bragging rights of saying you beat the champions. So Especially twice. I mean, right, they yeah. already beat them in Memphis. So to yeah. have that should be a nice start to their season, this being the Memphis Lobos inaugural season yeah, in the Southeast. It's, I, I believe for them, beating a team like Chattanooga already, and it only being their inaugural season, that's a pretty good start, especially with the way this Chattanooga team's been playing this year. Lobos are 3-3 three and three this season so far. Reed's going to stay in control of this one. Tries to get it over towards Ashley Cade. Broken up by Memphis. Nifty little move there by Kat Levisur of Memphis. That'll be a throw in for CFC. Cade will throw this one in. Summer Lancer tries to get her head on it. Chattanooga FC comes up with it towards Cade on the near sideline. Working the angle outside of the box. Trying to earn the throw in and does. So far, that Memphis defense holding up, but Chattanooga's had a couple of good shots already. So we're starting to see what difference those starters make as that throw in is a long throw in, still bouncing around, taken in by Marie Levisseur. Breaking that one up. Jessica Shepard. And this will be a Chattanooga FC corner, and Ashley Cade's going to head over to kick it. So, a couple of dangerous opportunities for Chattanooga FC. And uh, when you talk about a team that wants to go ahead and assert themselves early, Alex, don't you think they're off to a great start? I do, yes. And they have had a lot of good chances. A lot of chances in general, but a lot of good chances. And I believe those, we see shot going just over the bar there, I believe those will continue throughout the match. And if Chandu keeps up the pressure and keeps up the intensity as they started with, I believe 
the score line will be in their favor by the end of the match. We got to talk to Emily Sadler before the game, and she said that Chattanooga would love to get revenge for that loss. And I might be reading too much into it, but I mean, just the way that she said it, I don't, I don't think Chattanooga FC wants just the win. And I think they, I think they want to get at least four plus goals on, because with the caliber of team that Chattanooga is, they, them losing four zeros pretty big deal and like you said she's she seemed very intent on Chattanooga winning and very serious about that as we see a corner here for Memphis Morshe made the catch but her foot was out when she landed that's interesting usually that doesn't make much of a difference I think the ref is saying because it has to be the ball that crosses the line of course and I believe the ref saying the ball did, but from our angle, it really didn't look that way. But that's why they're on the sidelines and we're not. We're up here in a commentary booth. Wow, Rosales breaks that one up and Reed knocks that one away. So the defense of Chattanooga FC holding on that corner. And if you watched some of the Chattanooga women's streams before, you will remember that we talk about this Chattanooga defense a lot. And that's because this Chattanooga defense is a very solid one. They play very well together, and the defensive line plus more shame goal is usually a winning combination. So we'll see how it works out tonight. And that Memphis game notwithstanding, this team is not one that gives up goals very often. And Here's the offense being initiated. Summer Lancer getting a run. She's pushed off the ball. And here's another shot on goal. These are going just a little bit high. Hollingsworth took the shot. I would say to adjust for that, shoot a bit further outside the box because, there, as you said, the shots are coming a bit high and they're all shooting from right outside the 18. If they take a shot just a bit further out, I believe they'll be on target and in the back of the net that way. Shaughnessy to throw this one in. Almost kept in play by Cat Levasseur of Memphis. Ashley Cade, right in front of the Chattahooligans. This throw, she's going to step into this one, and that one's going to be headed out by Caitlin Scholes of Memphis, and this will be another Chattanooga FC corner. Their second of the day. Set pieces where Chattanooga FC has been dangerous. And that one's going to trickle towards the keeper. That was a uh, header while she was jumping backwards. And those are hard to get enough power on to trouble the goalkeeper. And like you were saying, Chattanooga has been very dangerous on set pieces. But what I like a lot about this women's team is when they get a throw in the attacking third, they turn it into a set piece almost. They have that long throw that they use so often and it's getting the ball into the box and Putting the ball in a dangerous area in general like that leads to chances created and leads to chances converted. And I really like that the Chattanooga women's team does that. They do it pretty well. And Ashley Kate is usually the one doing the throwing. She's so good at it. Right. And I watched both the men's and women's teams for Chattanooga. And that's a really interesting difference is... Great good run here. here. 
great just save. Just left of the net. It's an excellent save by the keeper. Came out, shut down the angle. Well done. But like I was saying, a key difference between the men's and the women's teams is when it comes to those long throws. I was watching the men's game last night when they played Greenville, a nice 2-1 win. And the men don't do long throw-ins, which I don't see why they wouldn't, because they're just these are basically throw-ins becoming corner kicks. But, I mean, I'm not the coach, so I don't really decide this thing. The defense for Memphis holds there. Defender was in the right spot by the net, helping her keep her out. And that one's taken away by the keeper, Kaylee Hammer. She's played well so far today, I believe. She has. Of the shots that have gotten anywhere near her, she's done a pretty good job of making sure that those stop exactly where they are. She's been put in a couple of bad spots, too, and she's come out already. Right, yeah. So... Once Chattanooga beats her, in the, which, from the looks of how she's playing, will be no easy task. Once they figure out how to do that, I believe the goals will come. Because I don't think the back line for me is, is looking all too good against our offensive players, judging from the amount of chances that Chattanooga's already created. I think the best defensive play of the day came from Jen Wee, and she's not a defender, she's a forward. Or check out a midfielder. I see a couple substitutions here you're mentioning. There's going to be a, quite a few of those. Let me see your first couple of the match. Checking in here, Emily Sadler, who we spoke to earlier. And the number 19, Brooke Watson, coming in for Memphis Lobos. And as you mentioned, the turf holds in a lot of the heat. So one of the keys to the game today will be substitutions and hydration. Right, yeah, and with the latter stage of the match, I will not be surprised there's a lot of stoppages for cramps and things of that nature because of how hot it is today. WPSL does take breaks from time to time. We didn't have any breaks in the previous home game that we did, but... It's a beautiful evening, that game. The weather was cool. so good, yeah. yeah. It's, I'll say there's a couple water breaks to be had throughout this match, with it being as warm as it is. Twenty-seven minutes remaining here in the first half. Score is still tied at zero. Checking in for Memphis Lobos is Sarah Tierney. Handwriting on the sheet's not as great as I would like. And we can't really be too picky here. We get what we can take, or we take what we can get. Rather, I'm sorry. Um, looking at the weather. According to Kay takes a shot, swallowed up by Hammer again. Save again yeah. According to WeatherChannel.com, it is 89 currently, but it feels like 96. I can promise you, it's probably more like 110 on the field. So it, it's very warm for the ladies out here today. Good move there by Marie Levasseur to get the ball to midfield. Memphis Lobos are pushing. Chattanooga's defense responding.
and they clear that. Jessica Shepard reversing field for Chattanooga. Pushes it through to Rosales, who's knocked off the ball by Levasseur. And Caitlin Barnes is going to have this one for Memphis Lobos. Pass it down the sideline, and this one's going to be run out and guided out by Reed for a Chattanooga FC goal kick. And we have another Memphis Lobo substitution on the way. And there's that water break that we talked about earlier. I would say that's extremely necessary on days like today. I'm not quite sure what the official temperature it has to be to require water breaks is. There's, FIFA has a set temperature that if it's over that temperature, you have to have mandatory water breaks. But I would say hey, the temperature today is well over that. And, these water breaks will come in handy throughout this match. The men don't typically take water breaks, but it is to be noted that the men usually play later in the evening, and so temperatures like these not necessarily an issue. Right. Um, especially during the second half of those matches, the sun's already set, and it usually cools off, and maybe we'll have a slight breeze every now and then as well. So the men don't have to worry about the temperature as much, but... The women do, especially since they are playing in the heat of the day and during one of the hottest parts of the day as well. Though they don't have the sun as, a, as big of a factor for the first half anyway. The second half it gets a bit uh, low in the sky and starts to mess with the goalkeepers, but for the first half it's not as big of a problem. Caitlin Casey comes in for Jillian Hildreth for Memphis Lobos. Play will resume as a Chattanooga goal kick. Score is still tied at zero. 23 minutes left in the game. Rosales is able to pull that one down, and Shepard gathers it. Out to the middle of the field. Emily Sadler. Josie Morche trying to get that one over to Hollingsworth and does. Levasseur comes away with it. Offside call. That would be offside. That was a right call. She was a good two or three steps ahead of the last defender there. Guys, calls right for the most part so far today. Sam Dabian also coming into this game here with a pass for Rosales. And it's stopped cold again by Kaylee Hammer. She's playing very aggressively as a goalkeeper, which for Memphis is probably a very good thing, especially against the Chattanooga uh, attacking team that plays that 
through ball for the most part. They don't shoot a lot from outside the box. They're playing it through and looking for those runs. And to have a keeper that's going to come out and gather those like Kayla Hammer's doing is a very good thing for Memphis to have in this game. And that should look familiar to Chattanooga FC fans. That's very similar to the way that Gazette Morshe plays. Very aggressively, she comes off of the line. And that usually works out pretty well for her. Right, yeah. And she plays with a lot of confidence as well. She hasn't conceded very many goals. And we have an offside call there against Chattanooga. She hasn't conceded very many goals. And... She has that aggressive, confident style of play, which for any team is nice to have because she'll come up outside of her box, help the defense out, be an extra passing option if needed, and control the box when the ball's played into it. Chattanooga's defense at the midfield area is something we should give a lot of credit to. Their back line has come up so far. Yeah, and that looks to me like they're playing a, a high line offside trap, which we've seen work already, and it's a very good opportunity there. Shepard tried to get her head on it. But Memphis is able to get that one out of the box. Shepard tried to get that one to Rosales and it was just a touch too far. Marie Levasseur. Passing it over. Check that Cat Levasseur passing it over her sister Marie. Speaking of that, sisters are a very common thing to both teams, it seems, here in the WPSL, with Chattanooga having a couple on their team as well. Chattanooga has Cazette and Josie Morche and Summer and Anna Lancer. And I'm fairly certain that uh, they played other teams with sisters on the squad as well. So that tends to happen a lot in the WPSL. And for a team that's pretty good because you have two people that are playing together, most of the time they do end up playing different positions and they know each other's play style which helps with the chemistry aspect of the team. Saved by Cazette Morche. Chattanooga's defense standing firm again. They haven't been put under a ton of pressure so far. But I was watching uh, France and Argentina the other day, and Argentina put on most of the pressure in that game, and France came away with more goals, so that's still something you have to make sure you defend regardless. Right. And thinking of that game, that France's style of play there was a very counter-attacking and speedy style of play. And it kind of resembles Chattanooga in an attack. They play very quick, they play very aggressive, and they do have those quick players that when they play a through ball, you have people that are able to run onto the ball behind the back line. So. I'll see Chattanooga getting, even if they don't have as much pressure on them, as you said, they still have to defend. 
but I believe they'll create their own chances as well easily, even if they don't apply as much pressure as before. It's, it seems they have gotten a bit tired and not pushing as far now in this later stage of the first half. Hannah Deere checking into the game for Ruth Rosales of Chattanooga FC and the substitution here for Memphis Lobos as Abigail Lawler coming back into the game. So beautiful right over right behind the Dallas scoreboard and the new apartment complexes. So that's a nice thing to see for the new champs here playing at home. Good view from inside Finley Stadium. Fifteen minutes left to go here in the half. Chattanooga FC and Memphis Lobos tied at zero. This will be a throw for Memphis Lobos. Not able to hang on to it. Now it's Chattanooga FC's turn. Ashley Cade with the throw, so watch for a deep ball here. This one gets to Deering. She tried to play it across to Davian, and it was a little too shallow. Chattanooga will get a throw in from the other side. And a Lancer. Check that Summer Lancer. Josie Morche at midfield. That pass heads past Sadler. Memphis Lobos trying to counter. And that will be offsides against Tierney again. Yeah, all these offsides from Memphis it makes it seem to me like they're very eager to get up the field, but. And from a striker's point of view, when you're getting that three ball, you don't worry about the line as much. You're just like, the ball's there, might as well run onto it and try to score it. And that seems to be the Memphis mindset here, is to score the first goal, as both teams would love to do. one's going to head out, and Ashley Cade will throw it in for CFC. We have the substitution, Brittany Reed back in. Summer Lancer back in. Chattanooga trying to put the ball back in a dangerous position. Emily Sadler forcing the Chattanooga throw. Got a substitution coming in is Haley Nichols. So as we mentioned before, the substitution is playing a huge part here. Chattanooga just has more than Memphis does. That's that comes with a whole home field advantage because some of the Memphis players, as they aren't professional players, they have other commitments occasionally. And when you're playing at home, it's easy to go and head to the stadium and everything like that. But when you're playing away, it's almost always an all-day occasion. 
and you have the team traveling and to and from the match in one day, so I would say the home field advantage really helps in that part of it, especially for matches like today. Yep, and Memphis is five and a half hours away from here, so that's a, quite a way to travel for them. Chattanooga FC, good pass. And this one's going to have to be run down by Shaughnessy. Memphis gets there first. That'll be a goal kick for Memphis. That'll be a Chattanooga throw. Shaughnessy forcing that one. If you guess that one to Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth trying to get out of traffic. And Memphis pushes it back. Josie Morche to Cazette Morche. Side call there. Looked like Sam Davian was already making her run and couldn't stop in time, or the ball wasn't played early enough to meet her run. She ended up being offside in that situation. Chattanooga's defense making it difficult for Memphis. Josie Morche is going to bring this one up to midfield. Tries to get it to Hollingsworth. This one's going to be run down by Summer Lanter. She plays it across. Deering gets to it. Fires. Hammer grabs it. Yeah, that was that looked like a tricky shot. She looked like she had her plant foot a long ways behind the ball and just kind of poked at it. And not to discredit. Uh, Kay yeah, Kaylee Hammer. It was a good routine save, and she did what she was supposed to. But I think it could have been a bit more challenging if Chenier had got a tad bit more power on it. Shepard at midfield. He's going to push that one back to Reed, using the whole width of the field. David's going to punch that one through. Chattanooga with a chance. Lanter, again, gets a second shot at it. Oh, and fires and scores. That's why you always follow up your shots. First one blocked, second one managed to cut a little bit through the traffic, find an opening, put it in the back of that well done. So it's seven minutes remaining in the first half. Summer Lancer on the second and third effort. And they finally break through to Hammer. I wouldn't blame Haley Hammer on not being able to make the save. She had a lot of players in front of her. She probably lost track of the ball occasionally. And good, strong finish put in the back of the net. So 
one to zero, Chattanooga FC. Leading Memphis Lobos. And this one's gonna trickle back to Moshe. Right before the half, perfect time to score. They will gain extra confidence going into the locker room because of this goal. And for Memphis, it's going to be a bit harder. They're going to be a bit frustrated, and they have to come back and get a, a one goal just to be level. But I would say they want to play for the win as much as Chattanooga do today. So they need two goals for that. And with the lack of possession, the lack of chances created, it's going to be hard for them coming out in the second half. Chattanooga trying to keep the pressure on Jessica Shepard, pushing this one up. Last pass towards Hoover. Couldn't wrap around that one enough to put in the box. It's a good cross though, lengthwise. Anyone making that back post run of that would have been crossing the box would have been perfect for it. Just couldn't get the curl on it. Davian's going to track this one down, and Memphis will break it up. Memphis trying not to go down into halftime. Trailing Chattanooga FC. Under five minutes to play here, four minutes left in the half. And we have another substitution for Memphis Lobos. Marie Levasseur check back in. She will replace Chrissy Song for Memphis. Field. Jen Lee tries to punch through the gap. That one bounces towards Marche. Haley Nichols at midfield swings it wide for Anna Lantern. Now to Shepard. She's dispossessed. Caitlin Scholes passing it to Abigail Lawler. Shaughnessy able to get it. Memphis gets it back. And this will be a Memphis throw in. Shaughnessy with a good pass ahead. Lancer sort of losing track of it in the air. Caitlin Scholes pushing it up ahead now for Jillian Hildreth, and it's just over the top of Hildreth. This will be a throw for Chattanooga. Hoover makes a move. Crosses it in. And that was a dangerous looking shot. And it was 
just over the top crossbar. Yeah, for a cross, I like she was aiming for the, the top corner on the back post there. I'd say she was trying to wrap around it a tad bit more to get the ball into the box, because that's a hard angle to shoot from. But I'd say she would took the goal of the win in as well. Shaughnessy earns the throw for Chattanooga. The brilliant backline work for CFC continuing. And she's played very hard this first half. I've noticed a lot of the times very physically demanding the ball. And for a defender, you want that. You want that physicality. You want someone that the offense doesn't want to play against. And I think Shaughnessy's been that so far, and she's done really well defensively for Chattanooga. Shepard's going to get this one over to Nichols. Now Davian. Davian's pass to Lanter. Lanter putting it over the top, bouncing to Deering. And this kick will be for Memphis Lobos, I think, on the handball. Hit the forearm of Summer Lanter. by Shaughnessy forces the goal kick. It's halftime. And it's halftime. Chattanooga FC going into the half with a lead. Seven minutes remaining in the half. And it was Summer Lancer putting it in the back of the net. So what have you seen from the first half, Alex, that you really liked? Um, I like the fact that Chattanooga, even though this points-wise this match doesn't really mean anything, they're not sitting back. They're not just taking this as a victory lap almost. They're actually playing to win. And it's apparent to see that through the way they're playing. They have a lot of very good attacking chances. They've had the majority of possession, I believe. And they're playing very attacking mindset-wise. And I believe that will lead to a lot more goals in the second half. Emily Sadler told us before the game that they are champions now and they wanted to play like champions and they have looked exactly like that. Chattanooga FC leading 1-0 to zero for halftime. You can go ahead and take a break and put your feet up while we wait for the second half to get started here. I hope you've enjoyed everything so far. I'm Keon Rose alongside me Alex Poulon and we'll see you in half number two.
welcome back to Finley Stadium. It's been a little while. Halftime was longer than we intended and uh, longer than what we wanted as the two teams get ready to play here in the second half. 45 minutes back on the clock. And here we go. The rain delay had us waiting around, Alex. Yeah, that was not very pleasant. We did talk about how hot it was the first half, though, and it probably was a bit of the humidity as well. Storm delay had us sitting around a bit longer than we would like at halftime, but it's cooled down nicely, and it hasn't actually rained all too much. It's just the weather in the area has been really bad. So it looks like it's cooled down nicely, and it should make for a great second half. Now, one thing that happens during a delay like that is you start to get into a flow in the first half, and then you wind up in a situation where you sit around for a little longer than you'd like. How does that affect play? Uh, well, yeah, it's definitely going to hurt the team with the momentum going into the half, because you want to carry that momentum through the halftime break. And it's hard to do when you have a longer break than you're used to. But I do believe both teams are going to be able to come out stronger now, and it's just going to make for a more evenly matched game here in the second half. Trying to see if that's a corner or a goal kick. That is a goal kick, or a corner rather, for, for Chattanooga. Ashley Cade will be kicking this corner as she usually does. So Chattanooga forcing the issue early. That one falls behind, uh, looked like like Shepard. And Atlanta losing control on the sideline. That would be a Memphis Lobos throw. And Chattanooga looking like they haven't lost very much momentum coming into the second half. Already on the attack early as we just saw. Well, now that they scored, and it took them most of the first half to do it, I think they still feel very confident that they're the much better team in this matchup. Uh, you mentioned earlier, when they did lose to Memphis, in Memphis, that they were missing a lot of their starters. Right. And that's clearly made the difference here. They do have their full team. And I think they're going to come out playing with confidence regardless of the score. But with that goal behind them, now they are playing like a team in the lead, and they're looking to score more from their play style. This will be a free kick here for Memphis. Chattanooga FC leading this one 1-0. One Summer Lantern, lone goal scorer in the match. Josie Morche will kick that one back to her sister. Chattanooga, I think you'd have to say, certainly leading the game in possession. Yeah, they possess very well, and it looks like they're wanting to focus on possession more so than going straight forward, which for a team that's in the lead and doesn't have much to lose in terms of standings, that's not a bad tactic. They can control the possession, work on passing, and hopefully get a very good team understanding going into the playoffs. Davian's on the ball. She tries to pass it midfield. It's broken up and taken away by Memphis. Caitlin Scholes. Memphis.
Memphis pushing this one down the sideline. Sarah Herring. And that will be out off of Levasseur. This will be a Chattanooga FC goal kick. And we can feel it up here in the press box, the difference in the temperature just in the heat coming off of the air. I can't imagine how much more relieved players have to be. Yeah, I'd say it feels a lot better on the pitch than it did in the first half. And we'll probably end up seeing a lot fewer substitutions because of that. It's not as hot, so it's not as strenuous on the players, and they can give a bit more effort than they would typically with it being as hot as it was earlier. That looks like Brittany Reed stepping up to challenge Jillian Hildreth of Memphis Lobos, and they'll have a corner kick. Memphis will. I believe this is Memphis's first dangerous attack on goal, actually, with this corner for this half. Chattanooga pretty easily slowed them down early. And this one bounces around and will head out of bounds. For a Chattanooga throw. It'll be a Chattanooga throw. Morshe stepped up, but Shepard was the one that broke up that uh, attempt. Into Rosales, and Rosales back to Debian. Memphis comes away with it, but it'll be out for a goal kick. It's interesting to see how the ref's choosing to call the game so far. He seems to be very much okay with physical play, and I've seen personally quite a bit of physical play so far that hasn't got anything called on it, which each team are probably going to end up playing to that style and it might get a bit more physical later in the match and hopefully if it does the ref takes care of it as he needs to. Rosales trying to run this one down not able to get there in time Memphis gets it Sarah Herring being pressured by Davian that one's going to be called I think the physical play favors the back line of Chattanooga a lot, especially like players like Brittany Reed and Lizzie Shaughnessy who don't mind getting into an offensive player. Yeah, and I completely agree with that statement. They have both been playing rather physically throughout the first half and for these early stages of the second half. So, yeah, I agree with you when you say the physical play definitely is in Chattanooga's favor. This is going to be a dangerous attempt here for Chattanooga. And the header bouncing just wide of the net. Cass Wade trying the header. She got her head on it. She just wasn't able to turn it back towards the net. And... The ball played in there was a great ball. Unfortunately, the Chattanooga couldn't capitalize on that. 36 minutes left in the game. 1-0 to zero is your score, Chattanooga FC over Memphis Lobos. I was trying to look up stuff before the game, and uh, I noticed that the Lobos in Memphis Lobos is all caps. And I wonder why that is. I'm not sure, because they're... I'm, I'm pretty sure Lobo is Spanish for wolf. I, I think I'm right in saying that. I'll double check myself in a second. But judging from their logo, it looks like a wolf as well. So... I don't know if it has a bit of a, another meaning to it or not. I'm, I'm not sure. I tried to find out, but I thought that was something that was really interesting. Because I know in this division is also Peachtree City MOBA, and the MOBA is in all caps as well. 
though that's because of the MOBA Corporation that owns the team. We were working that game when you found that out, huh? Yes. Yes, we did. Chattanooga FC with a free kick here. Brittany Reed will do the kicking. Yes. Logo is Spanish for wolves, so they're the wolves in all English. So, I don't know why they chose to capitalize it like that. Maybe it's just a team thing. Ashley Cave throws this one over the top of Summer Lanter, trying to run it down. Kaylee Hammer steps up to eliminate the chance. She's been good this whole match as well. She's coming out for the ball, playing aggressive as a goalkeeper should. And the goal that she did give up was very tough for a goalkeeper to end up saving. So, And it took Summer about two or three shots to even get the goal. She really did defend it well. Right. And with and at that angle, she had a lot of players in front of her, and it wasn't very far out. So a hard-hit ball had a really high chance of going in the back of the net, as we saw with the Chattanooga goal. Chattanooga losing it near the far sideline. Memphis Lobos, Lobos crossing midfield pass for Jillian Hildreth. Taken away by Chattanooga. And Chattanooga losing it just in front of midfield. Lobos will get another chance to counter. Keeping it in bounds is Caitlin Scholes. And Brittany Reed guiding that one out of bounds for a goal kick for Chattanooga. So again, Great defense by Brittany Reed. And she's part of this outstanding Chattanooga back line that we talk about so much on these live streams. They honestly are extremely good at what they do, allowing very few goals when at full strength. And them plus Morche has been an excellent combination. Ashley Cade wondering why that's a free kick. I'm wondering the same thing as well. I would say the ref called it that way because of the angle he had on it. It did look more like a challenge from behind, and most times refs will give free kicks for those. So I'd say that was the case, though it really was a lot less of a tackle than we've seen in other cases where there has been no call. Anna Lancer playing defense on Hildreth. Hildreth is not able to go anywhere. Chattanooga poking that one free, but Memphis regathering. And going for a long ball over the top. Rosales comes up with it to Davian. Memphis will take it back and try again. Offsides, Hildreth caught behind the line. Uh, she thought that that pass was going to be playable at her feet. And just a little miscommunication there for Memphis. That was like a bit of a late call from the linesman, so it had me slightly worried. I thought he wasn't going to call it offside, but good call in the end. Well done to the refing crew today. They've been on point with their calls so far. Sometimes you give officials grief when you don't know what they're looking at, but uh, you got to give them credit when they're doing well. And Rosales with a pass that just got broken up by Memphis. This one's still not really cleared. Rosales tried to get her head on it. This will be a Memphis Lobos throw. Chattanooga with the lead and still staying aggressive. But Emily Sadler said before the game, this was a win that they wanted to have. Right, and part of that has to be the element of revenge coming off of that 4-0 defeat against Memphis at Memphis. 
they want to win, especially in front of their home crowds. But they want to beat a team that they've lost to, the only team they've lost to this year. And uh, so far they're doing what they set out to do, but I don't think they just want to beat them by one goal. And they have another chance now. Davian getting around Hammer. Oh, fires a beautiful move. That was a great cut. She knew exactly what she was doing as soon as the goalkeeper came out. Great composure, hitting the back of the net. Wonderful finish. So 29 minutes left to go here in the game, and Sam Davian gives Chattanooga FC their second goal of the game to extend this lead. Which is what we were talking about. They didn't want to just win by one. That's proven there. It's a great finish. Great play all around. When you're the division champs, there, there's not a whole lot of unfinished business that you have left. But Memphis is the unfinished business that Chattanooga FC does have this season. So you could say this one's a bit personal. Thinking of the championship, I like the attitude that the players have toward the championship. We were talking to Amy Sadler before the match, and she said that winning the championship was... I believe she said she couldn't put it into words how it made her feel. And I'm sure most of the players can relate to that. So they're running off of that motivation and the high morale coming from winning a championship like that and playing extremely well here today. Ashley Cade forcing the issue and her cross was knocked out of bounds. So Chattanooga FC will get a corner. just over the head of Shepard. But Rosales will get this one. And the chip shot's gonna be wide right of the net for a Memphis Lobos goal kick. Chenu is still applying that pressure. They have two now, but it looks like they're not finished scoring. This one will be thrown in by Marie Levasseur. Memphis. Memphis getting behind Shaughnessy. Move knocks her down, Morche with the brilliant save. The header redirected it and she still came up with it. That being that close, that was just a reflex save, so extremely hard to do in that situation. Great Davian's going to gather this one over here. Crosses it in. And the shot too strong by Cass Wade. Just got under it. It was a great move, though. And I... From here, it looked like her only option was to hit that first time, so good on her for trying it at least. Well, we've seen a number of uh, wonderful saves from Kaylee Hammer. Is that Morche not under enough pressure, really, but there's her big save of the match. Right. And with the way Memphis are trying to come forward, I say she makes a couple more, but. Not too many, given the fact that the back line of Chattanooga is very good at doing their job defensively. Ref will call a foul there. That was the right call again. Just left foot in during the challenge. And I could call that a ref. Cat Levasseur was the one uh, knocked over. Here comes Davian. Nice little ball to Rosales, just a bit too far ahead. Guiding that one out of bounds would be Kaylee Hammer. For a Memphis Lobos goal kick. Five minutes remaining, two to zero lead. Goal scorers, Summer Lanter and Sam Davian. Oh, well done. Oh, no. 
Anna Lanter couldn't control it, but that was a good move by Ashley Cade to keep that one in bounds. will be another Memphis Lobos throw. Chattanooga's defense being pesky at the moment. And Lancer cuts off the angle. Memphis Lobos get another throw. But they were widening up the field and she came back and made it difficult. A good challenge by her as well. Slid in, well timed, got all ball. A real good tackle. And that will be a foul against Memphis. Sam Dabian getting the inside track. She was pushed down by Cat Levasseur. I can't express how much I love the Chattanooga Indians. They definitely bring a very unique take on the trash talking the other team game. And they're always a joy to listen to. And they're always in full voice no matter who's playing or when they're playing or what kind of weather they're playing in. Pass for Ashley Cade cut off. Chattanooga throw. Anna Lanter will toss this one in. Now oh, she gives it up to Kate. Another long throw here. Josie Morche runs this one down. Back to her sister, and Cazette Morche is going to get that one to about midfield. Rosales tries to control it. Memphis coming up with it. Caitlin Scholes playing it over to Brooke Watson. That one will bounce harmlessly to Cazette Morche. New team save there by Morche. Gathering the ball. Extremely easy. She's played well though. This whole season she's been excellent for China Green goal. So just continuing that with keeping a clean sheet so far tonight. It's a great pass there by Davian and good defense by Memphis to break that one up. Another foul against Memphis. Free kick, kicked by Josie Morche. 21 minutes left to go in this game. Memphis starting to get a little bit more physical as we get closer to the end of this one. And Ashley Cade will earn Chattanooga another corner kick. The physicality for Memphis is coming out of frustration. They haven't had many chances. Chattanooga's controlling the game, controlling the ball. And as a team, especially when you're down two goals already, that's really aggravating. And I would say a lot of frustration fouls are going to start occurring during this match. Hammer hits this one out and it's fired. Hits the crossbar. Summer Lancer keeping it inside the 18 and this one's going to... Bounce back, Chattanooga trying to reset. 
But Memphis gets this one over the top. Josie Morche is going to run this one down and kick it back to Kazette. This will be a Memphis Lobos throw. Brittany Reed's smacking the ball off the crossbar there. It's a really good attempt. Goalkeeper was out. It was just a tad bit lower, would have been the back of that. But it's good to see Chattanooga still with that scoring mentality. Chattanooga FC playing like their only loss of the season was a personal one. They're taking everything away from Memphis. Memphis is going to get a throw here. Corner. Or it's going to be a corner. Chattanooga FC leading 2 to 0. That'll be a goal kick for Chattanooga. I know if I was Chattanooga, I would definitely want to win by at least four or more goals to make up for that 4-0 loss. But that's me personally. I can't speak for the players on the field, but I'd say a few of them agree with me. I mean, if they're going for full revenge, yeah. I, I tend to agree with you on that one. I mean... If it's as personal as it seemed when we were interviewing uh, Emily Sadler at the start of the match, or before the start of the match, then I would say they want, they want to up them at least by a goal or two to the scoreline at Memphis. But give Memphis a lot of credit for how well they've been playing today, especially their keeper Kaylee Hammer, who's making it very difficult. I mean, she's come up with some key saves, yeah, completely agree with you. Without her brilliant play, this might actually be 4-0, but uh, it's, a, it's a testament to how well she's played and how well that defense for Memphis is doing. Right, and I do agree with that statement. The keeper wasn't as, or playing as well as Hammer's playing today, then I would say there's a lot more goals on the scoreboard than just the two at the moment. Haley Nichols will check into the game as well as Kate Dirksy for Chattanooga. Chrissy Song comes in for Memphis Lobos. run this one down and the shot on goal. She only had one touch to fire. She did really well to outpace the left back there. Great speed, good run. And maybe she had a bit more time than she thought she did, which is why she shot that first time. And if she was able to cut it back at all, it could have ended up being a better effort. But either way, good play there. Brittany Reed, back to Morshe. Jocelyn in midfield. Nichols and Davian come away with it. Pass ahead to Ashley Cade. She gets a step inside. Hits it back to Davian. Davian fires just a bit over the top of the goal. It was hit a tad bit wrong from my angle. I thought it took a deflection at first, but I would say it just hit a foot wrong. Davian is looking for goal number two of the match. Now 
will be out. Chattanooga throw. 15 minutes left. Time running out on the Memphis Lobos. I think that's a testament to where they've gone wrong in this game is their passing. There's just been that odd ball or two that haven't found their targets and it's caused Memphis a bit more uh, trouble than they would have liked, I'm sure. Reed gets in the way. And the defense of Chattanooga holds, earning a goal kick. Even if that was on target, though, it looks like Morshe had it covered easy, so. And she was actively moving in front of the net, switching sides. And it's funny that you should mention the passing because uh, we've been doing these games since the preseason and a lot of that was, this was the first time that a lot of these uh, women have gotten the chance to really play together and the chemistry had to develop throughout the season and passing has turned into one of the strengths of this CFC team. Right, yeah, and as you were mentioning, the preseason passing didn't look all too great. There were a lot of the passes just going awry miscues between the players, but now that chemistry has built up well. Chattanooga are playing like a team that's played together for a long time, and they play well together, and they have that understanding of where each player is going to be, and how to pass the ball, and where to pass the ball, and when to pass the ball, and it's turned out to be a big strength for this Chattanooga, especially going forward. Coming into the game right now is number 22, Katie Hoover. Memphis will throw this one in. Passes long. Be a Chattanooga throw. Davian with a nifty pass. And Hoover getting there just a step late. This will be a goal kick now for Memphis. Chattanooga is doing well to try to keep Memphis into their own half during the throw-ins. And they're cutting off this short throw and causing uh, Memphis to have to go long with their passes and it's just not connected well for Memphis as we saw in that previous pass out. So well done to Chattanooga for doing that. Back line of Chattanooga is stopping any progress, pro, uh, progress for Tierney. O'Shea's going to boot this one beyond midfield. back. That one deflected in. We were talking about miscues earlier. There was one. It looked like she was trying to find Davian, but they weren't on the same brain lead with the ideas of the movement off the ball. And if Davian would have stayed in the same spot, it would have been a great pass, but she decided to make a run instead, causing the pass to go into the keeper's arms. Hollingsworth tries to push that one up ahead to Nichols, just a bit past her. Countering is Memphis. And here's a good opportunity for Memphis Lobos. Shot's too high. Shot attempt by Tierney. The fans here are appealing for offsides on that play, which from the positioning of the player, it looked like it could have been, but 
I wasn't on the line either. Either way, it was a good attempt by Memphis on the counterattack. Almost making something of it, but just hitting it over the bar in the end. So, my Sakuma checking into the game for Chattanooga FC. She came in mid season. Sadler passes that up ahead to Nichols. Deering on defense against Caitlin Casey. Anytime Casey touches the ball, she's got a couple of defenders on her. That was a bit dangerous there. It was, but Morshe is able to clear that one. Memphis forcing the issue here. Casey. But Morshe oh, runs up and takes it off her feet. That's just how Morshe has played all season. The aggressive attitude. She controls the 18-yard box. And as we see there, she's coming up with big saves, taking the ball away from strikers even before they get a chance to hit it. Deering plays that to Sakuma. Over to Haley Nichols. Back to Emily Sadler, who's going to hang around midfield. Get that one to Reed. They're going to give the free kick to Memphis. Like the person on the ball was just tripped up a tad bit. And the referee is a bit late with this call, which the uh, Chatter Hooligans did not like. It's like they have it in for the officials or something. It seems to be a reoccurring theme on any game though when there's a missed call. The Chatter Hooligans make sure to make a note about that. And I'm sure the officials do not enjoy the treatment they get from the Chatter Hooligans. Though in fairness to the Chattahoo hooligans, they're, they're never rude, just snarky. Right, yeah. And usually after the game, they're all good sports about it. And they have a very inter interesting way of pestering more so than hurting people with their words. Under 10 minutes to play here, in fact, seven minutes left in this game. Chattanooga pressuring again. Hoover's got it. This will be a throw for Chattanooga. Hollingsworth making her way to the far sideline to throw this one in, and she'll get it into Haley Nichols. And Sakuma not able to control that one. Memphis trying to counter. and it'll be another Chattanooga throw. Kelsey Keown coming into the game for Memphis. Sadler passing it across midfield. Nichols up ahead. Sakuma with a nifty pass to Deering. Deering gets oh, past well the done. keeper. Oh, and it's defense. very well defended by Memphis. Deering saw Sam Davian do that just a tad bit earlier. He's like, I can do the same thing. She nearly comes away with a great defense and good awareness for the defender to get back and cover the line when the keeper came out there from Memphis.
And that was Brooke Watson on defense there for Memphis. Just have to give her credit. That was an incredible defensive move. Yeah, and it's always hard to be a defensive player when your goalkeeper comes out because you have to cover that line. And you can't do much but just swing your legs at the ball occasionally. And she does well to defend that, and nothing comes of it. It's great defense from Chattanooga. Shea burning some clock. Brittany Reed with a great defensive move of her own. She puts so much pressure on forwards. And she does play very well defensively. She's strong in the defense as well. And I personally wouldn't want to play up against her. I doubt any of the other forwards do as well. That's a great pass. Hoover's going to have a chance. He's going to fire. It's going to bounce towards Kaylee Hammer. Her crosses just haven't been coming off for her today. She, it looks like she hasn't been able to get her hips around the ball and swing it in properly. It's all either gone over the touchline or straight to the keeper, as we saw there. Hannah Deering to Sakuma. My Sakuma to Nichols. Nichols over to Hoover, and she's going to keep this one. She'll cross it back in. Sakuma keeping it around. And Emily Sadler will float that one over everyone. It's a tad ambitious there. but And they're up two goals. Might as well go for it. Two goals and three minutes remaining. Your two goal scorers of the game. Summer Lanter with seven minutes left in the first half and with 29 minutes left in the second half, Sam Davian. And Lizzie Shaughnessy is going to check back in. Getting behind the defense, Kelsey Keown. Chattanooga's defense recovers nicely. Credit to Memphis, though. That was a very well-timed run. And good ball through as well. And that shot's going to be wide right of the goal. Memphis trying to avoid the shutout. Brittany Reed gets it up ahead to Anna Lanter. Lanter back to Morshe. Morshe puts this one up ahead. Sakuma comes away with it, but not able to keep it in bounds. Throw in for Memphis. Closing into the final stage of this match, I personally do not see there being much stoppage time. There hasn't been a lot of fouls. It's been a very flowing game. There has been a few of those offside calls as we see another one there, but I personally don't think there's going to be too much time added on to the end of this match. Yeah, there hasn't been too much clock used up and no injured players or anything like that, so I completely agree with you here. Shea will kick the free kick as we are into stoppage time. Chattanooga FC leading Memphis Lobos 2-0. to zero. This will be a throw in now for Memphis. Most likely their last opportunity here to get on the board. Another good run there. Kelsey Keown, her second good run since being in the game. And that one's going to cross the face of the goal. Not much for Morshe to do. 
That was an extremely dangerous ball, though, just traveling right across the top of the six. Playing it back inside, but this one's going to bounce to more shade. She'll keep it in bounds to burn the clock, and that's it. 2-0 to zero is your final score. Chattanooga FC over Memphis Lobos as Chattanooga FC avenges their only regular season loss, returning the favor with a shout-out to Memphis Lobos. Alex, what did you see from this game? I uh, really saw a lot of championship qualities from this Chattanooga team. They are the champions of their conference, and they play like they're champions, and they play well, and I personally don't think they wanted just two goals in the end of it, but I, they'll go home with a happy with a shutout, and knowing they beat the only team that's beat them this season so far. So, I would say Chattanooga goes home really happy today, and I would too as a fan because they played excellently. And i got to give a lot of credit to Memphis Lobos and the way that they play defense. Um, Chattanooga FC had a, were in a position to have three or four goals in this match, and the way that that defense played, um, especially Kaylee Hammer, the goalkeeper. So a lot of credit to Memphis for how they played, but Chattanooga's offense, too much and too relentless in this one. Thank you for joining us today for Chattanooga FC Soccer here at Finley Stadium. I'm Keon Rose. Alongside me is Alex Poulon, and we'll see you in the next one.